Grab your popcorn and goobers. It's time for Motherhood in Hollywood with your host, Heather Brooker. This is a crude prude's perspective on being a full-time mom in showbiz. So hold on to your butts. Here's Heather. Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode three of Motherhood in Hollywood. You made it. Yay. So glad you're joining us for another episode. Today, we're going to talk to nutritionist Lisa Kutzing about intuitive eating. Hmm. Wonder what that could be. Sounds intriguing. Uh, she's also going to talk to us about stress-free toddler feeding. And uh, I also make fun of fat people a little bit, which I'm allowed to do because I am one, right? Isn't that the rule? Um, I hope you guys are out and about enjoying this beautiful summer we're having. I hope wherever you are, your weather is as lovely as it is here in Southern California. We actually just took a little vacation ourselves, went to San Diego Got to go to SeaWorld and Legoland and have a really nice time there. Had a few tantrums towards the end of the Legoland journey, though. Um, I think that might just be the phase that we're in this time of our lives where the extra stimulation and overexcitement and everything are just a little bit much to handle. So we try to be hyper aware of that whenever we can be so we're not stressing her out or wearing her out hopefully to make our lives a little bit easier in the process. Um, really quick before we dive into the interview with Lisa, I want to remind you guys you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well as Pinterest and Instagram. Look for Motherhood in Hollywood and uh, MIH Podcast is the Twitter handle. Also, please take a moment to subscribe in iTunes as well as uh, review and to give us a rating, please. That will automatically enter you into the drawing we're having on September 15th. That's the last day to enter for this drawing. I'm going to be giving away, I'm going to be giving away, I should say, an Honest Company Bath Time Bundle, which is uh, some of my favorite products to use on Channing. It's all natural ingredients, so they say. And um, I mean, who knows? I haven't personally like tested it, sent it to the lab, but I have to assume if that's what they're claiming, it's true. Um, so you'll win an Honest Company bath time bundle and more importantly, a motherhood in Hollywood tote bag. So you definitely do not want to miss out on that prize. It's a $70 value, which is a lot of money, uh, especially for me, a uh, stay at home mom who is, uh, I'm basically doing this entire show by myself. Um, I, uh, of course, with the help of my friends who come in as my guests, but honestly, everything I'm, I'm doing the website, I'm doing uh, all of the research and everything by myself from my own home office. So any support and encouragement you guys could give would be um, much appreciated. It's, it's a lot easier when you're a huge star and you can call on all your big celebrity friends to come into your studio and, you know, uh, sit around and shoot the shit with you for a little bit. So um, who knows? Maybe someday I'll be at that point. But right now... I'm doing what I got to do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support and um, encouragement. I really hope you guys are enjoying the show and I um, know that you'll enjoy the guests we have coming up. So uh, that being said, let's get started. Okay. I am so excited today about my guests because um, this lady... <laughs> Uh, little does she know, but she basically saved my life when she decided to be a stay-at-home mom with me. <laughs> um, well, not with me. We don't live together, right? No. no. <laughs> not that I remember. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, this is Lisa Kutzing. Kutzing? I don't know why I added an accent on there. Maybe Because it's German. It's German. I want to say Lisa Kutzing. <laughs> um, and she's a nutritionist and is very healthy as opposed to my not not really healthy so <laughs> but the best part is she's also a mom and we met in our mommy and me group two years ago I think it's like mm -hmm. almost exactly two years ago because yeah, we started when the girls were two months yeah. right and um we met at the pump station our little pump station group and out of all of our moms that were in that group I think there was like 16 initially yeah you and I were the only stay-at-home moms right Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. There was, I don't think anybody else in the group, which 
kind of surprised me. I don't know why I thought in LA there would be more stay at home moms. Yeah, I think it was just the group we got put in. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. Everybody had to leave after a couple yeah. of months and go back to work. Yeah, it kind of fizzled out. Yeah, it totally did. But we tried to keep it going for a while. And we're still in touch with just about everybody, I think. Yeah, pretty much. From that group. Mm-hmm. And um, last summer, Lisa had the brilliant idea <laughs> when our kids were about just over one, maybe like a one yeah, year, maybe. a couple months, something like that, that we kind of team up and do a nanny share once a week. Mm -hmm. Um, with this amazing nanny named Jessica that uh, you had used since Emmy was born. Her daughter's name is Emmy, by the way. Emmy. (laughs) Um, And uh, I was like, that's the best idea I've ever heard. Yeah. (laughs) Because I needed a break so bad. Yeah, same here. Um, Right now our girls are in the other room listening to Frozen or watching Frozen. I hear them giggling. They're they're fine. I hear them talking. Um, (laughs) We could hear them come barging in at any second because they're probably going to know where their mommies went. Uh What what are moms (laughs) doing? (laughs) But they'll find out eventually when we're like, get out of here. Yeah. Or I may do that. You may not. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So tell me, you do nutrition. Mm -hmm. Um, What... Is there like a particular aspect of nutrition that you like to focus on? Because I know there is. Yeah, what is it? So I'm actually so I'm a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for over eleven years. Um, always in pediatrics or NICU, and I when I was younger, just to give a little background, how I got into this. Mm-hmm. So when I was like in college, I started having some eating issues, like on the spectrum of disordered eating. Never like a full blown eating disorder, but mm-hmm. on the spectrum, and it was you know, upsetting enough to me that I sought help. And basically the philosophy that really helped me was, is called intuitive eating. It's a, there's a book, it was written by two nutritionists. So it was something that was really helpful to me. I felt like I knew so many other people, women especially, who kind of suffered or struggled in the same way I did. And I would kind of informally counsel them. And then eventually, because of that philosophy alone, I decided to go back to school and got my master's in nutrition. So I'm also a certified intuitive eating counselor. So I specialize in that kind of And when I met you, you were counseling. like writing your thesis or something, Yeah. Right? So when Emmy was nine months old, I finished my thesis. So I'd oh finished all gosh. the classes like a week before she was born. Wow. Like a week after finals, she was born. I think now like, what was I thinking? What if I had <laughs> had her early? Yeah. But it what all you... worked out and she yeah. was born a week later. Yeah. And then... I took some time and then I did my thesis. And Jessica started watching Emmy when I when she was like four months old, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started really, you know, getting taking the time to to work on my thesis. So Jessica would watch her for a few hours. It's so amazing great. how much you can get done in three hours when you know that's the only time you have. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. And that's yeah. for the longest time our nanny share was only three hours long. Yeah. And I literally would be like, Okay, I gotta go here. I gotta go to Target. I gotta go to Trader yeah. Joe's. But then I probably shouldn't go to Trader Joe's first. I should probably wait till the end. Exactly. And then you start planning everything out because you know you gotta be right back in right. three hours. And it is it goes in a flash of a second. But I'd still so rather quick. have that three hours than not. For sure. And it's three hours you know you're gonna have every week instead of trying to like piece something together all the time now um to me intuitive eating sounds like i eat whatever i want to eat <laughs> is, that, is that what it is in a sense because but that, then i'm doing it all right you're an intuitive eater i'm already doing that <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure though you're not supposed to be as fat as I am when you're intuitive eating. So intuitive eating isn't doesn't focus on weight. We believe there's also another philosophy called health at every size that is you know along the same lines of intuitive eating. So basically, it focuses on healthy behaviors, not size or weight. Okay. So you know if your genetic blueprint makes you to be you know a size two or a size 16 you know then that's what your genetics want you to be and that's where your body is most comfortable oh man (laughs) that is that is like a bummer because my mom is a fat patat like (laughs) so i'm like but see i didn't used to be i used to be really thin and athletic and really healthy but my mom is a big lady and she always been has been since i guess she had me yeah so i assume maybe that's my genetic i refuse to accept that though like i've got to find a way to get healthier well it's but health that's the whole point not Mm -hmm. doing it because you think you're going to be a size two i mean that's just unrealistic that's probably not what your genetics has in store for you you know and not for most people there's some people that just they eat in a normal balanced way and that's where their body settles but not most people do or have that in their destiny but yet we continue to fight for it and diet and 
and you know, the, there's more and more research coming out now that shows that diets really don't work. The, mm -hmm. the success rates after a year or two just drop off and it's something like three to 4% of people are actually successful at, at sustaining weight loss. So, and um, it just messes with your head. Oh, Restriction totally, yeah. like that, it just yeah. makes you feel miserable. So I'm probably in the wrong town then and in the <laughs> wrong business. <laughs> yeah. If I do not, in my mind, want to be a size two or no, can never that's achieve. that's great, though. You don't want to <laughs> do that. Don't have – having that unrealistic, yeah. you know, dream for yourself, it's just it's – you'd I will be fighting say, though, an up-the-hill battle yeah, forever. Yeah, that's true. I will say, though, I've never, as an actor um, – gone to an audition or gone like been up for a part that I know of where they're like she's too fat or she's not fat enough it's never Good. really come up yeah uh, and then that for me is great I yeah. hear all these other actors say oh I was too fat you know and they really? and I was just I'm only a size six and I was like the fat friend and I'm like who tells you that? Who oh is God. telling you that? Because nobody in all the years I've been doing this has ever said anything to me about my weight. Well you would think that you know TV shows and movies and, you know, whatever else should be reflective of what our society looks yeah. like, right? Yeah. That's not always the case, but yeah. there should be people of all different sizes. And, you know, having a TV show or a movie or whatever with all size zero to two women mm -hmm. is just not, that's not the the world we live in. Well, maybe in LA. But well, I was going to say, maybe it's the world we live in. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Uh, in, out here. But no, <laughs> yeah. it's true. Yeah. Um, and that there's, I think in the past few years, we've seen a huge backlash or maybe backswing mm -hmm. um against that with the success sure. of like rebel wilson and melissa mccarthy mm -hmm. and like bigger gals um but i don't know that it's still the norm especially not in la and definitely in not but i think there is there's more out there yeah of you know people being accepting of their size and saying you know screw you maybe i don't fit your ideal of what beautiful is but i'm still beautiful and i'm still gonna wear the clothes i want to wear mm -hmm. and pose for you know magazine covers and and look hot doing it. I feel like though some people should not wear the clothes they think they should wear. <laughs> well, I think it is true that, you know. That like, I love that people are like, look at me. I look amazing. But yeah. I'm like, you do not look amazing. <laughs> well, you everyone needs has to their own <laughs> style. And everyone Lisa needs to so wear it. Nice. Lisa's like, oh my God. Trying, that to, is rude. trying to be PC here. <laughs> I'll be the non-PC one. People. Okay. If your fat rolls are hanging out over your pants, it does not look good. I don't, you know. Well, but I think then that can't be comfortable either. That's the thing. That's I, it. How is that And comfortable? that's what I, I'm an, av an advocate for, wearing clothes that fit you and yeah. that feel comfortable because if you're trying to be happy and comfortable in your body, it's not physically comfortable to have pants that are too tight and you can yeah. barely breathe and you feel yourself squeezing into them. How, how are you not going to focus on your size and your weight, if, if you're constantly, if something's binding constantly and you're feeling it constantly. This is why I wear sweatpants constantly. There you go. See? And, <laughs> and everyone makes fun of mom. Like, I guess it's the mom yeah, thing, the, mom the sweatpants uniform. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. I love it. It's yeah. comfortable. I don't care if Channing spills something on it or yeah. what gets dirty. Well, even jeans nowadays, it's all, it's all like the stretch fabric, right? Which is great. Oh, have you seen um, those? those uh, are, they're jeggings. They're like late night. Oh, the pajama, jeans. the pajama, pajama jeans. jeans. Yeah. Okay. So. So one, <laughs> one year. For, Don't tell me you have a bit. Oh, oh. I told Chris when we first saw that infomercial, I was like, you have got to get me pajama jeans. Oh so he totally got me pajama <laughs> jeans for Christmas one year. Yeah. I put them on camel toe for days. Oh it was the <laughs> grossest thing ever. And I was like, I cannot go out in public no. like this. But they're so comfortable. I mean, really? that part wasn't comfortable. Yeah. But like, the, I loved the idea of it. Jeans. That are yes, like pajamas. for but sure. they were not flattering. And they were as comfortable as pajamas? Mm, they were stretchy. Okay. Um, which, they were like leggings. They yeah, were yeah. like leggings, but like a soft jean fabric. Nice. Um, but they just, maybe I didn't have the right size. Maybe I needed to go up. <laughs> maybe Chris was trying to be nice and he bought me like one size smaller. <laughs> Bless his heart. Oh, but they just tried. did not work for me. I know. Yeah. I wanted them to work so bad. <laughs> I have the hardest time finding clothes like yeah. that fit and that are comfortable. And so I can't really bag on anybody else for not wearing clothes. I mean, I will still bag on people, but yeah, I, I mean, I think it takes a lot of effort, especially if, if you're not in the size two to 10 range or something, you know, right. it's, it can take a little more effort. Now, one of the things that you do that um, I'm always envious of is how mm. healthy you cook. Oh, and like all of the health, you totally do. Like you sent me recipes that were like very exotic and like healthy. <laughs> and I was like, how many fucking ingredients are in here? This seems 
but I bet it, it was delicious. Like yeah. that, um, the chicken recipe that you sent that was like chicken thighs. Oh, the, the uh, oh my goodness. Tiki, the chicken tikka masala in the yeah. crock pot. Yes, yeah, the I crock pot that. chicken tiki masala. We yeah. can put a link to that on the website yeah. for uh, the recipe if anybody wants to know. Delicious. So good. It took me an hour in the grocery store to find the masala. Yeah, the garam masala can be challenging. But that's what, like, I think when I first started cooking, like maybe, you know, in college, Mm -hmm. it felt so overwhelming at first because it's like you, every recipe you find has some spice or some ingredient that you don't know what the hell it is. You don't have have to go pay 10 bucks extra to get it. And it's like, who has? But then you have it and it's stocked and you, and now you feel a little more emboldened to go and try another recipe because, you know, yeah. That masala is still sitting in my cabinet and I'm like, what am I? I gonna do with that? well you make it again that's what I mean I I end up doing a lot of the same recipes I have a binder of recipes that are kind mm-hmm. of my tried and true and it's like it's thick do it's you huge find that Emmy there's certain ones that she likes more than others for sure is she willing to try new things or is mm-hmm. she in that toddler she'll eat oh, I mean that chicken tikka masala she's mm-hmm. crazy about it in fact I made something else like a different chicken and rice dish the other day and we told her like you get having chicken and rice night and she was Super excited. And then when it was on the table, she was like, what? Oh. This isn't chicken and rice. You lied. Because she was expecting the chicken tikka masala. But did masala. she say it in Spanish? Yeah. She said, <laughs> Arro- what did she say? What did she say? Ayos, like arroz. But she says, ayos pollo. Ayos it- pollo. Yeah. I thought um, that Pitbull song was in Spanish for a liar. Mentirosa. Yeah, that's exactly. She didn't say mentirosa. We haven't taught her that word Is yet. that Does that mean liar? <laughs> liar. Oh. A female, like the feminine, yeah. Oh mentirosa. Mentirosa. It just sounds mean. Yeah, it kind of is. Stinking pit bull, man. He's a hater. <laughs> I've never heard um, that song. You haven't heard? What? Why are we not listening to that song right now? You've never <laughs> heard of that song? No. He literally just goes, mentiosa, mentiosa, mentiosa. And he gets like real mad about it. Like he's, It and sounds now, awesome. And I didn't know what it meant at first. <laughs> so I was in my car just like real perky, like mentiosa. Like it's something nice, but right. it's not nice. It's really no, it's not kind of nasty, actually. Um, we are going through a phase with Chan where she eats nothing but bread. Yeah, and I'm learning to not serve her bread, um, in the hopes that she will eat something else on the plate. But she's very stubborn and she's not eating anything else. Yeah. Last night for dinner, I am. Um, I made. Um, oh crap! What did I make? Oh, I made chicken fried steak, which I know is not the most okay. healthy thing. But I made Whatever. chicken fried steak and Homemade I had cooking is better. I don't know. I always say even the richest thing you make at home typically is going to be healthier than something you get from a restaurant or yeah. takeout. That's true because yeah. everything they do there is coated in butter. Yeah. Because they're only interest. They're not interested in your health. They're interested in you liking the food and coming back. And coming back. So it's like yeah. full of salt. Yeah. Full of salt, butter. full of sugar or uh, sugar sometimes and, mm-hmm. and, and fat. Yeah. More than you would cook with. Yeah. She just won't eat it, though. Like, she won't even try. And I know, like, when we talked about eating with Elise, when we did Mommy and Me After Dark, um, Elise was telling us about, Elise was our Mommy and Me um, group leader, and she's amazing. Um, (laughs) She would tell us about uh, not negotiating at dinner time. And you and I have talked about that. Yeah. Um, If you, I don't know, there's a couple ways that I guess you could try to get them to eat where you're like, if you eat this, then you can have dessert and you're not supposed to do that, supposedly. So, yeah. So I don't, uh, first of all, that ends up being, you know, the, the negotiations start getting more and more convoluted over time. You know, yeah. one day it works and I'll you know, take a bite of this and then you watch Frozen or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. or you can have dessert. But they start catching on and they start think, seeing what else they can get and it starts getting more involved. Yeah. Um. And the other thing, so I, I believe in kind of trusting the child to try it when they're ready. So, you know, and, and by, by not trusting them or by, by negotiating with them, it's like sending the message that you don't trust them to get there when they're ready. So I just believe in, in giving variety, offering it and letting them eat what they want and not, you know, pestering them about it. I, um, we've been trying lately to embrace the idea of it's okay if you don't eat it. Yeah. I'm, I'm offering it to you and it's totally fine if you don't need it. And like you said, kind of trusting her. Oh, here they come. Here I they them. Are. Hi, guys. The little monsters. Hi, what you been doing? <laughs> hey, baby. Yeah, you had a snack? You had a snack? Yeah. Did you share with Emmy? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Are you guys playing? Yeah. Mas agua. <laughs> Mas agua. <laughs> oh, thank you. You get uh, both, all of the waters. The water. Can you guys go play for a little while while we finish our, our podcast? 
No, no, don't, don't touch that. That's Miss Lisa's necklace. We want to be very careful with that. No water. There you go. Yeah. These girls are having so much fun together. They're such good buddies. They are good buddies. Channing um, regularly sings happy birthday to Emmy. Oh, that's so nice. Even though it's it hasn't been Emmy's birthday for a few months. <laughs> yeah. You're it. Okay. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What I, don't my, Thank I don't you. have my Emmy dictionary. Sometimes yeah. Channing <laughs> says things to me and people look at me like, what does she say? And I, I, I either translate or I... Yeah, I sometimes, I sometimes am able to decode and sometimes I'm like, I have no idea either. Um, Chani, go show Emmy, Emmy your pom-poms. Yeah, go show Emmy. Emmy, go with Chani. Go show Emmy your pom-poms. Go, go, go with Chani. Can you close the door? <laughs> you think they'll always listen that well? Okay, you don't want to leave la puerta abierta. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, close the door. Bye. This is my life. It's like they <laughs> they hear you, but they yeah. don't hear you. Yeah. Or like they tell we're working big time on listening with Channing. Oh god, it's listening. So hard. She even says, "I know, listen." And I'm like, "No, you <laughs> no, don't." You didn't. No, <laughs> you do not listen, and it is important. I'm constantly saying, "Look at mommy, look at mommy," <laughs> like to to see to that she's that looking contact, at me and yeah. listening, but she's just like looking everywhere but my face. I'm like, come on, come on. It's Come, hard. What, be so here hard with for me, them please. To focus. I know. Yeah. It's so hard for them to focus. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering how long it's going to be before they come back in here. I feel like it'll be any minute. <laughs> so we're talking about um, how difficult it is for these gals to eat. Oh, Emmy doesn't yeah. seem to have that problem, though. And I think it Some is. Some days. I think it is maybe because you do offer such great variety of things for her to eat. Like, you're so good with snacks and, like, fresh fruits and all of that. And I'm like... We do a lot of fruit. But I know Channing's got her GI stuff, so that's hard for you. Yeah, yeah. She's... I feel like I... I I mean, my grocery bill has gone through the roof, I think, because she eats so much fruit. Since you had Emmy, you mean? Yes, Mm -hmm. because it's so... I I like fruit, but I'm not, Mm -hmm. like, devouring it every day. But she's eating it, like, multiple times a day. Yeah. It's our like go to snack, and she loves. There's I, some moms who are against the fruit. They're like, I'm not what? giving it to her. Yeah, because they don't want them to get hooked on something sweet. They want that's, them to eat their Okay, vegetables. well, I'll tell you that that's ridiculous. I agree. Yeah. First of all, I think there's this idea that if you don't introduce your kids to certain flavors like sugar and salt, they won't like it. They won't develop a yeah, taste for it. Yeah, that's also crazy. And that's a lie babies are programmed to like sweet breast milk is sweet yeah so they're pro they will always like sweet things whether they're introduced to it from day one or when they're 18 and Mm -hmm. once they have access to it when they're in college or you know probably before that when they Mm -hmm. go to a friend's house they're gonna go ape shit with it and Mm -hmm. eat massive amounts of it because they've never had access to it i read online like um to to restrict fruit is just crazy but anyway is it no it's true in like some message groups or message board groups or whatever that i'm in i read online about how moms are like I was, you know, uh, held away from candy as a kid, and then I just yeah. went nuts by the time I went to college and like exactly. ate every piece of candy inside. Because you know it's out there. You're right. never going to be able to shelter them from it forever. Right. They're going to have access to it eventually, and then they're going to be like, how have I missed out on this for my whole life? Yeah. Like, now I have to make up for lost time. I yeah. already hate the fact, like, I feel... Um, I get frustrated because I try to come up with good snacks for her, but because we can't do bananas because she has a a banana allergy and we can't do dairy. It's like that's cheese and yogurt and like all of this great snacked stuff. And it's uh, really been a challenge. So now I'm like, my kid just eats bread all the time and I don't, Mm. I don't offer her bread for every meal Mm -hmm. in the hopes that she will eventually eat something else. Yeah. But last night for the first time, since she's been eating solids, we did a negotiation with her. I told her if she ate her carrots and a little bit of her chicken fried steak and we had some potatoes on the side, if she ate some of it, then she could have a cookie. She ate it so fast. And Chris and I were like, maybe we'll just whip out the little, you know, maybe we'll just whip this out every once in a while because she needs to eat vegetables. She needs to eat something. Honestly, I wouldn't stress too much about it. No. If you push it now, then it's it's going to backfire. Later. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. and, but, I know it's in the short term. You think I need to get some veggies in her, mm-hmm. but it's really not that important. She'll get to it for, you know, there are kids who go months literally without eating a single freaking vegetable. Wow. But 
they get to it on their own time. Are they also and especially if you're children? No, not at all. Not at all. Are they the little fat kids no, that I see at the park? Not at all. Not at all. That like they just get to here. it when they get to it, and and I think it puts a little bit of the pressure on us as the mm-hmm. people who are putting the food on the table because you need to make it taste good too. Like I'm sorry. I don't like steamed broccoli or steamed carrots. Ooh, I do. It's pretty gross. Oh, okay. Okay. I think it's gross. But that's so if crazy. You, you're so healthy. I yeah, love Yeah. See, broccoli. I'm not like, I, yeah, I love broccoli, mm-hmm. but like, you I want to toss on. it in garlic and olive oh, oil yeah. and salt and roast it in the oven and let it get like a little caramelized, yeah. charred a little bit. Then it's delicious. Yeah. And then Emmy will eat that. But like, yeah. I don't blame her for not wanting to eat steamed broccoli. See, I'm kind of weird good. like that. When I was growing up, broccoli was a big deal. In really? my house, my mom made such a big deal about every time I ate broccoli and I just loved it. I never really? was the kid that put cheese on my broccoli. Okay. I would put maybe a little salt and butter because yeah. we're from the Midwest. Well, and because salt and do, butter but... makes everything taste better. Right, exactly. <laughs> just like, you know, I guess it still counts as a vegetable if it has yes, salt and butter on it. Yes, for sure. But, oh man, I love broccoli. Even to this day, I will pick broccoli um, if it's offered or Brussels sprouts. Oh, I love Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. Roasted though. See, like I wouldn't want it like uh, boiled or something. See, I love I will take really? it boiled. How I will funny. eat it. It's not weird. I know. How Chris funny. is like, yay, Brussels sprouts. And I'm like, <laughs> get on board. This is, <laughs> this is good stuff. Or I'll make cabbage. Uh. Love cabbage. And I love boiled okra. Is that weird? A little. But you know what? <laughs> Everyone has their own tastes and that's good for you. <laughs> I know. But see, I hate peppers. Like I will not eat red peppers oh. or yellow peppers or anything like that. Really? Yeah. Bell peppers. No bell peppers. Huh. They just taste weird. They have a weird flavor and smell to me they okay know what it is yeah but the green veggies i'm on board with oh yeah. they're back hi. hi guys what happened did you hit your head yeah come here can, can you go show any your coloring book do you guys want to color what's happening we're getting some kind of entertainment here with the, <laughs> yeah with a car careful hey channing are you watching frozen What's happening right now? Is Aunt, where's Anna and Elsa? We better go see. What's happening? Take your water. Go watch Anna Elsa. Yeah. Go, 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 go. 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 Hurry, hurry. Hurry, go, go, go. <laughs> run, run, run. Run, run, run. <laughs> they are so goofy. <laughs> It worked. Hashtag parenting. Like, <laughs> hey, go watch TV. Uh, yeah, yeah. That to was sometime. hilarious. They both just put their cups in their mouth and like went like hopping and skipping <laughs> down the hall. Yeah. Oh, we forgot there was a movie on. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm trying not to stress out so much about yeah. the eating thing. I personally love vegetables. Mm-hmm. I know you can't tell by looking at me, but I actually no, do but that's love not vegetables. true. Yeah. I know it goes back to your intuitive eating. Yes, thing, and good. health at every size. Health at every size. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, and you teach a class about that, right? Or yeah. So well, well, this okay. So I have an online class called Twelve Ways to Intuitive Eating, which is mm-hmm. basically it's an interactive course where I'm kind of guiding you along the way, um, but you do it from the comfort of your home and on your own schedule, and it teaches people to be an intuitive eater without having to pay for an intuitive eating counselor, which of course I also do, but it's, you know, in the end it's more expensive because you're having to pay per session and it can take months to kind of, you Mm -hmm. know, get to a place where you're eating intuitively. Um, So the 12 week course is a little bit more of an affordable option and it's more convenient, especially for moms to be able to do it from home, do it during nap time. It doesn't take that much time. uh, Is it like um, Skype session or like a face? No. So it's a, it's an online course. I have basically each week, the general structure is each week I cover a principle of intuitive eating and then I, and then there's kind of exercises, sort of like homework afterwards to sort of drill it home and to, to help you to practice it in your life, essentially. And then there's discussions. So you, you know, can participate in the discussions and I will answer your questions or your concerns or give you feedback and, and your classmates can too. So there's interaction with me and also the other people who are taking the course. That's so awesome. I have a session starting on August third I think August 3rd? that's a Monday yeah okay. August 3rd so everybody where can they go to sign up for that so you can go to either my website which is lisakutzing.com k-u-t-z-i-n-g or intuitive eating academy.com oh is that the title yes. of your business well it's the name of the school yes oh, I see. Of it, that's the name of the online school mm-hmm. and then the class is 12 weeks to intuitive eating I eventually see. i hope to have other classes on there but that's the only one yeah. i have there right now and you offer one-on-one nutrition counseling too i do okay. mm-hmm. 
I have see. an office in South Pasadena. And oh. I can do phone and Skype, too. See? And I know you. And I can get, like, personal, private <laughs> consultations. I should call you and be like, should I eat this? No. <laughs> no, don't do that. I don't think she wants you to do that. <laughs> Lisa, I'm staring down the barrel of a cheeseburger right now. <laughs> what, what do, do I, I do? do? My gut is telling me to eat it. Um, then I would the say go for it. But honor your hunger and fullness. Only eat until you're satisfied. Okay, see, that's where I have the problem. There's, I think, a big portion of our culture, and myself included, that feels like you got to finish your plate, that it's wasteful if you don't eat at all. And I think a lot of that, a lot of it stems from childhood. A lot of it stems from economic. You know, if you grew up in in a, in you know, if your childhood was concerned about money, or even now, you know, I mean, I don't like wasting food or money, but you know, is it, it's, it's sort of wasted if you're eating it when you're not hungry anyway. Right. right? Cause yeah. what is it doing for you? Nothing. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess yeah. going out to eat though, the portions that you get at the restaurants yeah. are sometimes enormous. Right. Um, I was, uh, talking to Chris and I said, you know, it's no wonder these celebrities are so thin because when they go out to eat to these high end fancy restaurants, they pay $60 to get like two bites on the plate. Uh, yeah. And they're like, I'm so full. And I'm like, I would be pissed <laughs> if I was spending that kind of money and they brought yeah. me out just like a little nibble. I'd right. be like, where's the rest? Yeah. Um, so I think that's sort of like ingrained in our culture, like sure. big portions. I'm going to value spend 20 getting bucks. value for your money. Right. Yeah. And I think some of it is to stem from childhood and the the clean plate club you know Mm -hmm. be encouraged to finish what's on your plate regardless of whether you're hungry or or not but then you know you can always take it home with you and enjoy another day and and what I try to focus on is satisfaction and what is going to be a satisfying experience and is it really tasting that good anymore when you're stuffed and kind of like you know just shoveling it yeah just shoveling it in because you feel like I paid for it I better eat it you know yeah it's not really tasting that good anymore so is it even worth it I watched um I'm sort of addicted to this show called my 600 pound life oh I on TLC holy god these people get up to 600 pounds and more and over like there was one woman that was like 730 pounds okay and she could not physically move and she had to like have people like roll her around to lift up her fat flaps to like clean wash under it with like a wet rag and i (laughs) I'm fascinated. It's like a train wreck and it's like, I'm overweight and I know that. And it's something I struggle with a lot. Um, but then sometimes I'm like, I don't give a shit. It's just my life. That's who you are. And, um, these people are so unhealthy. Like I just keep thinking, how is their heart pumping and maintaining that kind of pressure and that kind of Mm. weight? The human body is not made to be over 700 or 600 pounds. Of course not. Yeah. You know? And yeah, it's just amazing to me. And they go in and they have gastric bypass mm-hmm. and um, they start losing all this weight and then they have all the skin, the skin hanging yeah. off and they have to have that removed and it changes their life. But For I'm like, sure. how do you, how does it get to that point? Yeah. In the that's, first place? that's the, the extreme mm-hmm. examples for sure. I mean, there's, you know, studies have really shown that um, the overweight, overweight range for, um, for BMI and even obese is really not related to any more um, Mm -hmm. morbidity and mortality than, than the so-called normal range for BMI. Really? Mm -hmm. But it's the extremely obese that, you know, morbidly obese that is, is where you start seeing. So like, like you you said, the human body, the heart, the organs are not meant to sustain that pressure. Just hundreds of pounds of pressure. Yeah. Um, and you're also, I want to talk really quick about your, um, stress, free toddler eating which was a little bit we were talking about earlier but you're actually going to be teaching a class or having Mm -hmm. a talk yeah doing a talk at um it's called the family room in san marino Mm -hmm. on august 5th at 10 a.m okay um so i think you have to register for it but it's just like an hour-long thing but i've done the talk for some mom's clubs and i think for parents it really takes a weight off knowing that they can kind of relax a little bit and not be so stressed like you said getting the vegetables in or you know making sure she eats this much and it's a little bit of more of a relaxed approach, but helping also to establish that positive relationship with food so that they never have to see me when they're older. <laughs> you guys, you're killing me. You're killing me. You guys. Are you playing in the playroom? Yeah. Okay, go stay in the playroom. We're trying to work, guys. Yeah, close the door, but take yeah, it. Close the door. Go, 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 go. Take, run, run, run. Your coloring. Yeah, go show Emmy your colors. Can you color a picture? Can you draw a picture? Here, you want to take water? Did you come? Oh, Emmy, come, Emmy. Yeah. Emmy. 
Channing, make sure you share with Emmy. Oh, Emmy, go with Channing. Come on. Make sure you share with Emmy. But in the playroom. Let Emmy push that to the playroom. Gentle, gentle. Yeah, the playroom. Yeah. Thank you, can you. Take your water with you, Emmy. Take it with you. No. No? Okay. Okay. Can you close the door? Say bye. She's coming. Bye. It's going to be a lot of editing. A lot of editing. <laughs> I know. I just keep thinking that. I'm like, hey, Dios mío. <laughs> that's okay. Um, man, it really does warm up in here. Yeah. I got to figure out a way to keep it cool. Mm. Um, I remember in our Mommy and Me After Dark classes. Yes. Um, mommy I love that so much. I miss that group yeah. of ladies. It was I, nice. I, uh, we talked a lot about eating and baby led weaning and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, I just... One of the things that, that surprised me about the mommy me class that um, all the moms worked and stuff like that is that, um, oh crap, I forgot what I was going to say. My brain just totally, <laughs> mommy oh, it's how far away everybody lived. That's mm. what it was. Um, everyone's so spread out Yeah. because I thought, oh, I'm going to go in this mommy and me class and everyone's going to live like in the same area yeah. and they do not. Everyone no. lives like sort of all over. Well, because I think the problem is there's not a whole lot of places like the pump station, right? Yeah. So people just came from all over. Yeah. My friend Natalie just had a baby and she joined a lactation group or a lactation mm -hmm. like mom's group or whatever yeah. by her house. Nice. And now she has like f this big group of moms. They all hang out and they all oh, meet every week and awesome. talk about breastfeeding. And I'm like... I miss that. Yeah. I miss that mom Well, connection. I found a great, the E-Rock Moms, like the M-O-M-S, Moms mm -hmm. Offering Mom Support Club. And that's in, a nationwide e thing, right? Mm -hmm. Moms it's a nationwide, Maybe even worldwide. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. But it's um the when we moved to Eagle Rock that we found, because they didn't have one downtown. But there's a great, and it's Eagle Rock and Highland Park and maybe Glacelle Park too, but. And I think Glendale's included, so you should yeah you should join. But I it's great. Join. There's it's a great group of moms. Yeah, really cool. I've made a lot of good friends. They always have stuff going on. I think that class sounds amazing. The toddler feeding. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like something I need to be reminded of. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually really glad you came on to help remind me of yeah. that. Yeah, um, yeah, because it's something you know you're feeding your kid all day every day, and it's like if it if it's a stressful thing and you're having to do it multiple times a day. That doesn't make for a very, right? You know, a very happy time. No, shh, remember we're being real quiet, real quiet. Well, I hope everyone will go online and check out your class and uh, get some more information about it. I've got a cranky toddler here who's literally trying to wrestle the microphone out of my hand. Um, will you come on again and maybe we can yeah. do it when the girls are at your house or something? Or one of the nanny chairs. True, good idea. And then that way we can definitely um, have a little less interruption, which sure. we love. Which we love, right? It's part of life. Part of life. It mom. is part of life as being a stay-at-home mom. But it's a little distracting. <laughs> it's a little distracting. It, when you can't even like finish a sentence or a thought. Yeah. And it's not time for dinner. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank I appreciate you for having it. me, Heather. Yay. <laughs> Everybody go to motherhoodinhollywood.com for more information about Lisa's classes that are coming up, the intuitive eating course that she's going to be offering online, as well as the stress-free toddler feeding class. You can also go directly to Lisa's website at Lisa Kutzig, that's K-U-T-Z-I-N-G, Lisa Kutzing.com for more information about what she offers and her classes as well. Also, don't forget to take a moment to subscribe and give us a rating and review in iTunes. You will be automatically entered into the special drawing we're having for an Honest Company bath time bundle and a special Motherhood in Hollywood podcast tote bag. What? Sign me up, bitches. Uh, I already have one, so I don't need to win it. Yay. But you can have one, too. All of this prize is worth about $70, so that's a lot of money, kids. That's a lot of money, and so you want to make sure you... Definitely enter into that, and I will pick the drawing at random and send it on your way. Uh, must be 18 or older to enter and also be in the United States, please, because that overseas shipping is expensive. We will do some more prizes later on down the road, so don't worry, everyone who's in Spain that's listening right now. You guys calm down. I'm still thinking about you. 
Um, this has been a lot of fun, you guys, and we have lots more coming up over uh, the next few episodes. So make sure you come back. All right. Have a great week, you jerks. Bye. Mama funny. Balls.